Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again to Tilly Talks. Hey, what number Tilly Talks is this? Four, five, five, five. five, five. And uh, I will show, I mean, anyone that was a bit early may have seen Tilly. Let me just quickly flip the camera so everyone can just see. Oh, and she goes out of camera straight away. So she has done serious amounts of growing. Um, but anyway, my name is Julia Robertson. I'm the founder and proprietor of Garland Therapy Center, Garland Meyer Therapy. And Kushler, my colleague and friend, over to you. Introduce yourself as my, my whole table gets moved with my camera on it. Oh my <laughs> never, never work with dogs and certainly not puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, Hi, I'm Kushla Lehman. I'm also a girl and my therapist, but I also teach puppy school classes and I have done for the last 15 years. And I also run my own follow on training classes as well. So I do a lot of, um, of training um, with work with all sorts of dogs. Um, and I can't wait to hear about t oh, Tilly. <laughs> She's grown. I know, I know. Or I shrunk. I'm not sure. Which one do you think it is? <laughs> So what we were going to do this week is actually, it's been really, um, it's been lovely. We've had some, uh, lots of questions in yes, we from have. Uh, puppy owners um, asking um, some, for some help and some advice and guidance on some issues. Um, mm. One of the things that we've had quite a few questions on is uh, my puppy keeps humping uh, their toys or yep. trying to hump or parts of bodies. Or the bed or something. Yes. 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 So the really important thing to remember about the puppies at this age and certainly up to about five, five months is that this is not hormone driven at all. This is purely a, a behavior. So there's a few reasons they could be humping. One is which is they usually want to try, they're trying to stimulate play. So they would be doing that in a litter with all their litter mates. That's one of the, the, the games that they play. So they're trying to initiate play. So a really good way of actually distracting them is just to go up gently, just move them back with their chest to so take them away from what they're humping and then engage them on a really good game yourself so that you're actually, you're providing that toy and game. Sometimes it's frustration. They haven't right. got what they want when they want it. Right, right. So sometimes it can be frustration and another times it can be a distraction technique. So they can then start to distract onto um, another toy or the rug or something. And even it can be sometimes if they're tired. So right. there's lots right. of different reasons, but it's certainly not hormone driven. So don't think I've got to whip them to the vets at six months, you know, because, you know, it, it's hormone driven. Um, it's not. It's a pure behavior. And if you watch puppies in litters, that's how they play all the time. Right. So yeah, they're really just recreating that play that they normally get. So we need to feel, fulfill that need for them. So. Excellent. Really interesting. And I'm also thinking from a physical perspective, we don't really want to encourage them to do that too much because that can become then a repetitive physical activity, which um, is not really great for their sort of developing form, is it? No, and that's a really good point. It really is. Um, but, you know, it, it's one of those things that distraction is your big thing as well. So give them a yeah. really exciting game and say, oh, what have I got instead? Um, so that, you know, the, to actually just interrupt that behavior before it becomes a habit, because sometimes yeah. it could become yeah. a habit as well. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, Thank you. Yeah, that was that was quite a big question. That was quite a big question. What else have we had? Actually? Could we have a few? We did, and um, we had a really interesting one asking about the, um, the limit between stimulation and overstimulation. Yeah. So yeah. giving your pups enough stimulation without them going over threshold. Mm. Um, and that was a really exciting, that was an interesting one. Um, yeah. One way I would actually say this is to make sure that your dogs, uh, your puppies have loads of um, stimulation they can cope with and not go over a level. So we yeah. talked about this a few weeks ago where people go, I've taken my dogs out and my puppies out for a walk and they're obviously not tired because they come home yeah. and do zoomies. Yes. Yeah. Um, and actually that's a sign of them being over threshold and over tired. And they've had so much information and so much adrenaline and mm. so much mental stimulation. They just don't know what to do with themselves. 
Um, and that's when it they feel so counterintuitive, doesn't it? It feels completely wrong, but it's very interesting that. It's very interesting. So it's a really good idea if your puppies do come back, you know, you must take them only for very short walks. And what I would really suggest you do is a couple of things is firstly, if you want to take your pups to a nice open space um, and use a long line, 10 meter long line, so they can't wander off, they don't suddenly get spooked and run off somewhere, but just sit down with them and let them explore that area. We don't need to walk, walk our pups. And I'm yeah. sure Julia can, you know, explain you know why and a, and a very i i took tilly out because she can go out now um i took her on a long line and just within that radius of the line in a field she just found so much to look at and sniff and listen to and just so much within such a small but new area yeah very good very good advice and it's just a great way of just letting them absorb all the environment around them. You know, and if we take them out and go, right, we're going to go for a walk, then mm. we stop them sniffing. Yes. And we stop them taking in all the information about the environment. We're just mm. forcing them to walk in a straight line along the road. So yeah. Especially when they're young pups, the best way of doing it is just to go and sit down in a field and be engaging with them because that's how you're going to teach your pups to have a really good recall is to be fun and to call them back in and go what have i got come on what have I got? want to be with you yes i did a i did a talk um on sunday as did you on canny cross but i did one about puppy my therapy that's what they called it so it is on our site if anyone's interested and and it is something we will be talking about again but i was talking a lot about the sniffing and the developing and building the puppy from the inside out which Again, like all these things, the mental side of it is balanced with the physical. So if it's good for them mentally, it can be good for them physically. So just standing and letting them be in that small area is so good for them physically too. Yeah. So it's, it's a real one. If you're trying to introduce your pups to something they're a little bit worried about or scared about, like cars or loud noises or bin men or something, um, there's a fine line, obviously, between stimulating them and overstimulating them with that as well. And a good um, test for that is just simply, have they stopped taking treats? If you've got treats with you and they're scared, it doesn't matter how many cream cakes you offer me. If I'm locked in a room with a tarantula, <laughs> really? I'm not eating any. Really? No, yeah. Really, yeah, I would, yeah. But, <laughs> so it, it's that kind of, you know, if they're too scared, they won't eat. Mm. I've seen her do that. I've seen her when the, the thunder, she just wouldn't respond to anything and most certainly wouldn't have responded to food. And that's it. So it's a really, you know, in that situation, nothing that you do is, right. is going to get through to your pups. And that point, they are completely over threshold and we need to remove them from that situation and yeah. keep them safe, which is what you did with Tilly, which is bring her in and just say, look, just reassure her and hold her and just go, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I just going back to that, I remember at that particular point, she just ran and we were in a closed garden. Sorry, she's just annoying Maggie at the moment. Maggie, shall I remove a puppy from your I just love her really. That sounded really quite brutal to me. Um, thank you, Maggie. Um, but she just ran and luckily it was um, confined and restricted, but um, it, it you really should keep your puppy on the line at all times, especially now, shouldn't you? Because yeah. you never know that situation might happen and they might just run and you will not have any chance to stop them. That's exactly it. And you never know what's going to happen in that open environment. If suddenly someone appears on a bike really quickly past you and that spooks your pups, you know, they will. They'll just, you know, they will run because they're afraid. Um, like at which point, it, mm. yeah. Um, and the other really interesting um, question we had in was yeah. about puppies eating their own poo. Yes. Yes. Interesting. It is. And it's actually quite a common problem. Uh, it's right. more common than you'd ever think of. Honestly, it is. There's a few really simple things to check first. Um, mm -hmm. Are you feeding your puppy enough food? It can be because they're hungry. So yes. it's the most important thing is to check you do grow as you said, Tilly's growing every day, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, she seems to sleep and grows. Yeah, so it's really important that you keep checking your puppy's weight 
and that you're feeding them an appropriate amount of food because sometimes if they're not actually being fed enough then they actually supplement with their own poo the other one yeah the other one is just to check what food you're actually feeding them sometimes uh some of the uh lower brand foods sometimes have more sugar in them and it can be uh quite tasty on the way out so um really really yeah so oh. okay. so it can be quite tasty recycled um so the best way of really doing it it's it's to and also sometimes it could be entertainment Right. Um, trying to fight, you know, I, they sometimes they play with it before they eat it. So sometimes it become a game. So the, really, it's it's um it they a lot of puppies grow out of it, but the right. really the, the key thing is to go out with your pups, make sure you pick up really quickly when they've had a poo, and engage them on a game. So again, you're more exciting than going back and eating the poo. So it can be a little bit of hard work because you do mm -hmm. need to go out with them when they go to the garden. And as soon as they've had a poo, you go, yay, well done, what have I got? And either entice them away with a treat or, and then have a game with them while you pick up. So they, it breaks the habit. They don't have that opportunity to do it. Yeah. Um, but it, generally they grow out of it, honestly. And a lot of things, it's like, you know, young babies, everything goes in through their mouths. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and oh, I, everything, everything is tested in the mouth. And you go, no, don't, and then it comes back out again, generally. That's, that's exactly it. And all they're doing is they're trying different things. Um, and sometimes they find it quite enjoyable. So just make sure that you are giving your pups appropriate, but plenty of play and, and fun times with you. So they don't, you know, don't, they don't go and find their own. But usually it's something quite simple, like just checking that they actually have got the right amount of food for the weight that they are. Because we forget how much they grow very quickly. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's amazing how much she does eat and um, she most certainly is putting it into growing. But it's interesting how often you're saying um, it comes back to you, to you to inter interact with the puppy, to make you exciting because they want to spend time with us, don't they? So we've really got to put that time in so they can get they can get from us that time and that attention so they're not redirecting onto other things that in later on could look at as bad behavior completely we are we've got to be the center of their world and we've only got a limited time to do this so yeah. it's not like oh, i'll do it next week or I'll, I'll do it the week after you know this is the time you've only got up until 16 18 weeks um, to instill a lot of all of this with the pups but you mm. have got to be you know if you're taking your pup out you know you've got to focus on what you're going to do so your pups it's really important as we've spoken about is getting them used to lots of different things in the environment but those are short snapshots you know you, yeah. when you took Tilly out how long were you out for when you took Tilly out when I went to, when she was in the front pack it was 10 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes max it really was. And she was exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Yeah. But it's very interesting. Um, yeah, so we are really important. But what um, the exciting thing about the, um, Tilly's litter now is that she's had her second vaccination and she's going out. And I think the really shocking, sorry, all the backdrop in the night, she decided to go for the rich environment again but make it her own. Um, I, don't, I don't think she's in camera view. No, she's not. Um, the thing that I have found, and I know that we'll be looking at this more next week, is that she is not confident with people. And that is quite alarming. And um, her breeder warned us about this because they were born within the lockdown. So not only is she not very confident with people, but some people she's meeting are clad in PPE, or at very least a mask. So these puppies, sorry, I think I might have to switch it over in a minute. These puppies, especially now, they're going to have to get used to very different things to what puppies did maybe a few months ago. Is that right? Completely. And I, this is, I'm talking to a lot of people and a lot of owners who are having the, exactly this issue at the moment is, you know, the litters normally, the breeders have, 
loads of people coming in from um, five week onwards um, to meet the puppies and to play with the puppies and get them used to people and know that people are fun. Um, and all of a sudden we're in the situation where, you know, they've come from that environment with their brothers and sisters having the breeder and close family there. And, and then to us and only seeing the people that are in the house. And yes. this is something we really do need to address with the pups. Yep. Uh, yeah. Luckily now with the change of, you know, having a few people and the, the you know, the, the relaxation of some of the rules. But it's really important that people don't overface the puppies. You know, you right. come into a social gathering and there's family and they're like, oh, puppy. And, and, you know, try and pick them up and try and hold them. And that actually, when you think about it, is going to be fairly terrifying for a pup. So please, if you are, you know, when you are doing this, let the pups approach at their own speed. Don't yeah. drag them towards the people and say, right, come on, there's a person. So never let the pups choose to go towards them. Yeah. Have really high value to your <laughs> I'm so sorry about the background noise. Let me just, I mean, it is Tilly Talks, but at the moment it's Tilly taking over. Um, that's what she's trying to get into, that box, if, just in case we <laughs> But yes, it's a social distancing, which makes it difficult as well, doesn't it? But this is something I think we're going to be talking at a lot more next week. Isn't that right? That's it. We're going to talk a lot more about this. And we're also going to um, have a chat as well. And, and we're going to go in a bit more depth about separation and getting yep. your pups yep. and any other dogs as well, you know, used to this idea that unfortunately, you know, we're going to work. Mind you, a few of the dogs are probably going, oh, thank goodness for that, I've got the sofa back. I've got the house to myself again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, it's really, I mean, we hopefully have been building up, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes where you're leaving their pups on their own while you're in the garden or you're upstairs or you're in a different room. So they're all getting that idea of actually coping with being on their own and then, you know, and being left on their own for short periods of time. Yeah. But we need to start to build on that as well. People ought to be doing that with their other dogs too, shouldn't they? If they've been Abs with them up. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the dogs at the moment are just, you know, oh, this is great. I've got on tap cuddles and they've probably got lots of family yeah. around and the children around and, and it's going to be a real wrench for the dogs. And maybe, you know, if they're still all the way through till September, you've got children at home as well. That's an, a lifetime for a dog. It is. It is. Yeah. No, we've got very... But we've got the same issues and we've got some additional ones. Some of the new issues make them easier to manage, but we've, we've got to change in some ways how we, how we socialise our, our dogs and puppies and how we get them back used to being how they were living and how we were sort of managing our lives. Exactly. Lots, lots of changes and we mustn't forget our dogs. Oh, it's, it's such an important, and they are such an important part of our lives. We've got to make it as, you know, as easy as we can for them. Exactly, because they don't read the news. They don't know what's happening. We've got to okay. sort of warn them. Yeah. Could, I, don't, I can't believe it. We've, we've done it again. We've it's zoomed over by three minutes again. <laughs> I know. So, um, so again, I'll just repeat. If anyone wants to look at the, the develop, development of the puppy that I spoke about in Good Works, so look at the Good Works. Um, video on the on the Garland site, the Garland Maya Therapy site. Kushla, thank you very much. Same time next week. Great. Again, anyone that's anywhere, please let us know where you've been listening or, or watching or whatever. We love seeing and any questions, please post them for us. Thanks, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Thank you. you. Good to see you, Kushla. Bye. 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 Bye.